Okay, we are ready to do the waistband now. So we need a waistband pattern. And as you can see, I have a beautiful waistband pattern here. And what you have to first decide is, is the length, and then you need to know the width. So on the length, what you're gonna do is, you need to take your waist measurement plus ease. So we usually give it, um, give an inch, one inch ease. So whatever your waist is, plus one inch is the length you need. However, you're also going to have a seam here and a seam here, so you also need to add an inch and a quarter to that length plus your waist measurement plus ease plus an inch and a quarter for the two seam allowances, and you also need an inch and a half for the underlap, okay? So that inch and a half will give you room to put your hook and eye, your skirt, hook and eye, and some people like to do a button and a hook and eye, maybe two hook and eyes or whatever you want, but it, an inch and a half will be plenty of amount of length. Okay, so again, that's waist plus ease, your underlap inch and a half, and two seam allowances. That's your length. Okay, now let's talk about the width. Okay, the finished width of a waistband, you need to decide how wide you want your waistband on your waist. A typical waistband is an inch and a quarter. If you want to have an inch, you can do an inch. If you want three-fourths, that'd make kind of a skinnier little waistband, but it's really up to you. But the standard width is an inch and a quarter. So on this width, I need to do an inch and a quarter times two because a waistband folds over in half. Okay, because you have your waistband and the waistband facing. Um, unless you want to sew a separate piece of fabric on, which you don't want to do. So that means I need an inch and a quarter and an inch and a quarter. So that right there is two and a half inches. Then I need a seam allowance to sew it onto the front of the skirt and then on the back of the skirt to go up underneath. Or in our case, we're going to leave it hanging down straight and do a Hong Kong finish on it, Hong Kong binding. So I need an inch and a quarter plus an inch and a quarter plus two seam allowances, which, in, which is another inch and a quarter, and then I'm going to add in a fourth of an inch for turn of cloth, because I have to turn it a couple times, and the fabric I'm using is quite thick. All right, so that means my finished length here is actually four inches, okay? So I'm just gonna measure it for you, just in case you don't believe me. There's four inches, so again, we've got two and a half for the front and the facing, so that's two and a half. Then we need, wait, one, two and a half. Then we're going to need um, two seam allowances, so that's an inch and a quarter, so that's inch and a quarter, and that leaves us with a quarter of an inch for turner cloth. And when we do the, the seam inside the waistband and finish it off, if we have a little extra, we just trim it. If we don't have enough, 3 eighths is actually what we want to end up with usually, and so we trim it. So that just makes sure I'm not going to run short. All right, so that is the size of your waistband. Okay, let's look at our waistband here. Now, I've got my pattern done. On your pattern, make sure you mark center back, center back, right here where the seams are, 5 eighths here, and on this side it's 5 eighths plus an inch and a half. Then you also mark your center front. And then from center front to center back, we're, we're just, I'm not going to mark it because that will just, should, you should be able to put it around your waistband and, um, where it needs, and ease it in where it needs to be. Typically your skirt is eased into a waistband because your waistband is your exact measurement of your waist, but the skirt coming up around your hips, even though you plan for some ease at that high hip, sometimes we plan a little extra ease or we end up with a little extra ease, so we ease that into the waistband. Okay, so here's my waistband. Now the other thing is when you cut this out, it's only a cut one. It's also on the straight grain because we want the, the strongest um, direction to go around our waist. So we put this piece on the straight grain and we also, because we're just cutting one, we're actually going to cut with the right side of the fabric up. We always cut with the right side of the fabric up for cut one. For cut two, of course, one would be up and one would be down. So there we have our waistband and we've cut it out. Look at that. Magic. Okay, it's cut out. So the next thing I'm going to do is put some little snips where I need it, except I really don't need to do my 5 eighths here. 
and but I do want to mark where um, where the center front is and center back is here and the other one is 5 eighths from here so I can actually just measure in on those or you can put a little snip if it will help you to me measure it up okay so once I get my waistband cut out the first thing I like to do is I like to press it in half so once I've got it pressed in half and this is the inside of the band now I was able to cut this on the selvage anytime you can cut a waistband on the selvage great that's actually a natural way to finish off the inside seam of a selvage we're going to do something different but we cut it on the selvage it worked out so now I'm going to turn it to the wrong side and we're going to talk about the next thing we need to do which is interface the waistband okay I have many options for you so let's just talk about these options the first thing is do I want to fuse it in or do I want to sew it in? So let me show you some of the um, sew in options. Okay, one of them is to use a crisp sew in interfacing. And usually these are a little bit lighter weight, so sometimes I will interface the entire band knowing that it's going to end up folded. And it just gives it a little extra support there. However, I find that with that, it mostly makes it bulky more than support. But that's one option. Okay, another option that's a good one is hair canvas. Now if you're going to use hair canvas, you want to just cut it the size of your finished waistband, which is an inch and a quarter, and then I put it right up to my fold line, and I want it to be against the front of the waistband. So that's going to be the front of the waistband. This is going to be the seam that I sew it to the skirt, this will be the inside seam that then comes over and gets finished off. So I lay it up against that fold line and then you have a couple options. One of them is to do a um, just a, a catch stitch and here on the edge that will catch the waistband barely and, and usually your stitches will kind of end up being either on the fold or a little bit towards the back. That's one way to do it by hand, a nice catch stitch here, flat catch stitch. The other thing I could do is I, because I, I want this to end up against the front of the band, but I could flip it to the back and I could go about an eighth um, to three sixteenths from that fold and machine stitch it right along here. And then when it gets folded back on itself, it's caught right near the top, but it's on the wrong side so you don't see it. Okay, so that's, and then this You'll, it'll be seamed and so it's in there pretty good. So that's hair canvas. Now if you're going to use hair canvas, which it makes for a great waistband, it's very crisp, it's stiff, however it has to be dry cleaned. So make sure you use that on a fabric that would be a dry clean only. This is a cotton twill. Um, it's very heavy and so I would not use that on this because this is the type of skirt I could probably easily machine wash. Okay, so let's take that away and let's now, oh, there I have one more sew-in. This one is a really great waistband and it comes in a package. You can buy packaged waistband interfacing and it, this one is a Palmer Plush, perfect waistbands, one inch non-roll. Now, this is only an inch, so if you're going to buy this, keep in mind, you can only have a one inch waistband. But again, on this one, it goes up against, put it up against the center of your waistband, and you can catch, stitch it by hand, or you can flip it to the wrong side, stitch right along the top edge, and then when you're finished, it will fold back, and it will be up against the front of the waistband. And it's very stiff. It's like buckram or something, but it's very stiff, very nice, um, and it's all made up for you. you just. Uh, use the package. This has six yards in it, so that would probably be enough for about six waistbands. So if you want to try that, you're welcome to. Just know you'll have a little bit narrower. But you can buy all sorts of waistband fabrics. Uh, I mean, uh, waistband interfacing. You can also get the kind that's perforated. It's kind of has little perforated things here, and it's fusible. You can get the kind you know wider. If you get the wider, you can trim it down to what you need. So that's an option. Okay, so that's our sew-ins. Now let's talk about our fusibles. When it comes to fusibles, you, again, you can buy waistbanding interfacing that's fusible, and you would just put that 
down. I like to interface the garment itself when it comes to waistbands. So I would lay that down on the waistband side and fuse it. But do a little trial to make sure it actually works well with your fabric. So the other options that you can use are a weft insertion. This is a regular, uh, regular strength weft insertion. And if you're going to do that, you need to cut it along the lengthwise grain here because that will be the strongest. And then I lay it up to the fold. Now, when I do fusibles, rather than cut the entire seam allowance off, I actually like to leave about an eighth of an inch so that I can barely catch it so that I feel like it's not only fused, but it's actually stitched in a little bit. But that's because I have a distrust of fusibles. So, but there's that one. And then you can also use fusible uh, woven. Okay, and I am not a fan of fusible woven. However, in waistbands, I do think it works pretty good. So again, I would put it right here up against the fold on the front side, and I would trim to a half an inch here so that I leave barely enough that I might catch the edge in the 5 eighths. So I think what I'm going to do for this sample skirt is I'm going to do half of this or most of some of this in the weft insertion fusible uh, along the lengthwise direction to make it stronger and then I'm going to use fusible woven and I'll label it so you can feel and see what that's going to feel like. So those are all your options for waistbands so go ahead and decide which one you want to use. If it's a fusible make sure you do a little trial. Um, if it's a woven, you still can take some fabric, put it inside, fold it over, and, and you'll get a good feel for the weight and the crisp, crispness or support for that waistband.